What if we used the atmosphere instead of fighting it? An incredible new way to get to space. This is ATO, Airship to Orbit, and we've already started. Everybody knows you need a rocket to get to space. There's no other way, right? Right? But what if there was? Hey, JP here. This is about using the atmosphere instead of fighting it to reach space. This is ATO, Airship to Orbit. ATO uses lighter than air vehicles to climb above the atmosphere before kicking on the engines and accelerating to orbital velocity. In this video, I'm going to show the animation of the entire flight to orbit and return to explain it. Then we'll take a look at some of the real hardware behind it. Airship to orbit consists of buoyant flight from the ground to 180,000 feet combined with gossamer high-speed flying wings to 300,000 feet, then followed it by a several hours long orbital insertion burn. Okay, true confessions, this is just air launch. Air launch is used right now as an alternative to rocket only way to get to space. Air launch is using an airplane, a balloon, an airship, or whatever, and starting up high and fast before firing the engines. The first stage of the Saturn V moon rocket, the biggest part of the rocket, only got them to 200,000 feet off the ground and going Mach 6, only a fraction of the way there. What if you got rid of the first stage and did that first part with something else? the rocket itself would be a lot smaller. That's air launch. Air launch has been around for a long time. This is Pegasus, a winged rocket that was dropped from an airplane at 39,000 feet going 530 miles per hour. Pegasus made 45 flights to orbit, delivering satellites up to 1,000 pounds to orbit 120 miles up. It started its life being air launched from a B-52 bomber and later it was launched by a Lockheed TriStar airliner. ATO is air launch, but we're not starting at a measly 39,000 feet at 500 miles an hour. We kick in the engines at 300,000 feet when we're already going Mach 10 and we're starting from a floating outpost at the edge of space. But an airship? Really? You know, I hear this all the time. You can't make a balloon go supersonic, let alone Mach 10. Well, that's not quite true. NACA did it in 1959. NACA was the US space program before NASA. They took a 12-foot diameter Mylar balloon to 300,000 feet at Mach 10 in 1959. That's over six decades ago. They did it in a program called Project Shotput. They showed that it was possible. And we'll talk about that program at the end of the video. There are a lot of challenges to make this work. To get over a lot of the challenges, just like a rocket that needs three stages, ATO is a three-stage operation. The first stage is an airship called the Load. It carries people from the ground to 140,000 feet. The second stage is a floating spaceport at the top of the atmosphere called Dark Sky Station. You know, you don't put your seaport in Kansas. You put them at the edge of the sea. We are putting our spaceport at the edge of space. The third stage is a giant gossamer hypersonic airship that goes to orbit. 
We call that vehicle the Ascender H1. Call it a pipe dream, but it's a pipe dream backed up by decades of research, thousands of tests, and over 200 flights into the upper atmosphere. As we work on the project, we put together animations to help explain it all. As we learn more and more and get closer to pulling it off, the design changes and the animations get obsolete. Now, you can't constantly make animations or you'll never get the real thing done. However, every now and then, when there's enough changes to really call for an update, we do. Well, and that's what we've done here. We've compiled the research and lessons learned from the tests and updated the animation to reflect the current configuration of the airship to orbit system. Here's what that looks like. There is a lot of new tech required to make this happen. And we've come a long way with it. First, there's a lot of airship and platform development. We've built 12 airships and five platforms in the program so far. One of the critical pieces is the high altitude propeller for the first stage airship. These need to work in near vacuum at 100,000 feet. We've taken our props there and they work great. Valves, 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 the bane of my existence. Valves that are light and work in the cold and near vacuum conditions are tricky, but they're a critical part of the program. So lots of testing is in order. We're currently on our fourth generation of valves and there's still more work to go. We created a PDF all about the Airship to Orbit program. It's available at our online store, The Dark Sky Market. It talks about all these things and more. There's a link in the description below so you can check it out. Plasma engines. We are using hybrid chemical electric plasma engines with the electrical power coming from thin fill solar arrays on top of the airship. We've conducted 130 for engine test firing so far, and we still have a long ways to go. We also test the solar cells up there in the operating environment. The H1 orbital airship moves fast. 
we do high-speed aerodynamic and plasma active drag research with our Mach 4 shock tube wind tunnel. We are upgrading the tube to handle Mach 6. The faster research we'll need to do up there in the environment. You know, a ton of operational experience in the upper atmosphere is vital to making this work. And we do it from upper atmosphere formation flight to high altitude platform operations. We're up there flying the missions. We are putting people on board. Hey, I want to go. Don't you? This means life support and human integration. We built a submarine to use as a test platform to develop the systems and gain experience. The sub is also our spaceship training tool. You know, one of the biggest challenges is paying for it all. We are not billionaires. This is a pay-as-you-go program. Have you seen the chair in space or the margarita in space TV commercials? Well, that was us. We also have a Patreon site where everyone can join in and help. There's yet another link in the description below so you can check that out. Now for the big question. Why? What's wrong with rockets? What's wrong with filling a tank with 1.1 million pounds of the most combustible stuff known, putting people on top of it, and lighting it on fire? Heck, six minutes later you're in space. Rockets work. You know, have you ever been to a rocket launch or watched one on TV? The countdown hits zero and the big rumble starts. A moment later, the announcer says the rocket has cleared the tower. If you look all around, this is when the people start cheering wildly or crying with joy. Tears are everywhere. People's loved ones or their years of work did not go up in a ball of fire, and they're cheering that. What if that happened at the airport? Imagine you're at a terminal watching the flight before yours take off. What if each time a plane took off, everyone broke down, started sobbing with joy, or wildly cheering because the 747 didn't explode? Would you really want to get on the next plane? There needs to be a better way. ATO is the slow road to space, riding the atmosphere, not the explosion. Okay, back to ATO. I hear all the time, this is completely nuts. What? Supersonic balloons? Even going Mach 2 requires special high temperature metals, advanced heat shields, and the most sophisticated engines known. Well, also, that's not quite true. I'm talking about Project Shot Put, done in 1959. This project was done as part of the research going into what became the Echo Balloon communication satellite. The NACA team hand glued together Mylar balloons and launched them on surplus rockets. At 300,000 feet, the balloon would deploy and inflate going Mach 10. This program had lots of setbacks, exploding rockets, torn balloons, failed inflation systems, but they finally got it to work and got a Mylar balloon to zoom a quarter of the way around the Earth at Mach 10 before finally coming apart. If you could reach Mach 10 at 300,000 feet with a rocket launched hand glued balloon in 1959, what could you do today? What if they had modern engines instead of World War II surplus rockets? Could they have gone faster? What if they had a modern guidance system instead of no guidance system at all? What if instead of a ball-shaped balloon, they gave it an aerodynamic shape? Could they have flown higher? With 66 years of advancement in technology, could they have bumped it up from Mach 10? 
to Mach 17, to orbital velocity? Could they have gone from 300,000 feet to 500,000 feet? Could it have flown to orbit? Could you then sneak a payload on it? Could it be turned into a launch system? This is a huge undertaking, and I can't tell you it's going to work. However, it would be such a huge game changer in humanity's reach into space that somebody needs to check it out. Somebody pretty crazy and willing to take the risk. Well, that's what JP Aerospace is all about. Higher and faster, one mission at a time. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll keep you in the loop of how it's going. I'm JP, thank you for watching. JP Aerospace, America's other space program.